Welcome back. Today I have the Motorola Moto G 5G. Quite a mouthful. This is the 2022 version, not to be confused with the 2020 or 2023 phones by the exact same name. This one has clearly taken a drop or two, and while the back panel is plastic, the display is still glass. Let's go ahead and get this phone opened, but first we need to get the SIM tray out of the way. It won't end well if I forget to take that out. Using a thin metal pry tool, I'll run my way around the edges in the seam between the back panel and display frame. It should separate with a satisfying pop as each tab is released. Carefully open this like a book, as there is a ribbon cable that runs from the power button to the main board. Because it's screwed into a retaining shield, I'll just pop the button out from the back panel instead. Two Phillips screws hold that tiny little plate in place. They need to be removed and set aside. Thankfully, all the screws in this phone are the exact same size and length, and there's no reason to keep a dedicated map of screws. Once you've got the button disconnected, there are only 8 more screws to remove, bringing our total to 10 for the top panel. The panel can then be removed and set to the side. Everybody's favorite part right here, disconnecting the battery. It's pretty important. Let's head to the bottom of this phone where we'll find 8 more of those same black screws. With a little bit of persuasion, the panel should pop off to reveal the charging board and eccentric mass vibration motor. Motorola has used these since the very beginning of their smartphone lines. Even the original Droid used this motor. There is a single board screw hidden off to the right side near the coax connectors. I'll disconnect the daughter board ribbon and display ribbon from the main board. The two miniature coax cables are disconnected and the board can be popped out of the frame near the battery connector. Because I'm replacing the entire frame with a new display, I need to swap some small parts to the new body. These ribbons are easy to rip, so take it slow. The buttons are securely adhered to the side. Some alcohol should make short work of this tape's grippy abilities and allow it to be safely removed. Now the other end of the daughter board ribbon can be disconnected, and I'll pop both of the other mini coaxes and lift the tiny PCB out of the frame. The vibration motor can easily be lifted from its housing, held in only with a rubber sleeve and some pressure. However, the contact pads for that motor are adhered down. This will need to be removed gently. Over to the heating mat to soften the battery adhesive. A few minutes at 60 degrees Celsius and a healthy bit of booze should weaken the semi-permanent adhesive. While most people will tell you not to use a metal pry tool to remove the battery and opt for plastic instead, I'm not here to enforce any rules. I'm just some guy on YouTube who passed 5,000 subscribers. Thanks for that. That main sub ribbon that was sandwiched below the battery can now be pulled away. This is our new display and frame. It has a new battery adhesive pre-installed, which is pretty cool. Now you can follow these steps in reverse to reassemble the device, making sure small components go in first. Thanks a ton for watching till the end of the video. If you made it this far, you may as well subscribe, right? Overall, not a difficult phone to repair and not drastically different from almost any previous Motorola model. This one should be a breeze. A bit of an update, I've recently moved and have some new fun toys to play with at a new job. This doesn't mean repairs are over, I've got plenty more to show you, so stick around, I've got a lot planned.